This tutorial will show you the most basic and free way to incorporate text into your projection mapped cake project. Using this method, you can project names, dates, and other custom messages onto wedding cakes, birthday cakes, or cakes for other celebration events. I will show you how to create the text using free video editing software called Shotcut, and even how to integrate your text into existing video you want to use for cake mapping. I will then walk through how to project that text onto a cake using MapMap, a user-friendly and free projection mapping application. To create the text, we will be using Shotcut version 19, which is a free, open source video editor available on Windows, Mac and Linux. I would usually use Adobe apps for my work. That's programs like Photoshop for graphics, After Effects for animation, and Premiere Pro for video editing. But these are professional software packages that don't come cheap. We will be doing very simple things with text and video, and Shotcut is more than capable of delivering what we need for this task. What we will be doing is bringing a guide into Shotcut and designing text on top of it, using it to make sure we position the text where we eventually want it to be on the cake. I work with a five tier cake. Each tier has a square base and is five inches high. I start with an eight inch base tier at the top. The bases get larger in two inch increments as you go down the cake. That's 10 inches, 12 inches, 14 inches, finishing with 16 inches at the bottom. If you will also be mapping a cake with the same dimensions as mine, you can use my guide. In the description, I've included a link to a page on my website where you can download a folder containing all the assets I refer to in this video. If you want to make a cake with different dimensions to mine, follow my tutorial on how to create your own guide by clicking the card. Open Shotcut and you will be presented with a user interface that looks something like this. We have a filters panel over here on the left. Filters are things like transitions and effects that can be applied to our media. We have an empty timeline at the bottom here into which we will arrange our media later. I'm also given a recent panel and an audio peak meter panel, but I'm not interested in either of these, so I'll close them. In addition to the panels that have loaded automatically, I want to add some more, which I can call up from this tray up here. I'll add properties and playlist, which will live alongside filters in their own tabs accessed here. Let's start setting up our new project. Assign a projects folder where your new project will be saved. Give it a name. Now set a video mode. You could leave it on automatic. As it explains here, automatic will set the resolution and frame rate based on the first file you add to your project. However, I'd rather be in control of things, so I'm going to set things up manually. Click on automatic and go down to custom and add a new preset. I'll give it a name. Then give it a resolution of 2048 by 2048 because that's the size of my guide and video content. Set the aspect ratio to 1 1. I'll set the frame rate to 30 frames per second because that's the frame rate of the video content I'll be designing text over. If you're using content you've purchased from Luma Bakery, yours will also be 30 frames per second. If you are using some other content, check what its frame rate is and enter it here. Click OK and start. Add your guide to your playlist by going to Open File, navigating to your guide and hitting Open. You can see the file in the Properties tab. Add it to the playlist by going to the Playlist tab and pressing the plus icon. Or you could drag and drop straight from your file browser. 
For me, there are some strange artifacts around the guide. This isn't anything to worry about. It could be a glitch to do with the fact that it's a PNG image with transparent sections. It goes away when we put the guide on top of a black background. At the moment, our timeline is empty. Many video editing programs start you off at least with empty video and audio tracks into which you drag your content. But with Shotcut, you have to create your own. So right click on the timeline and select Add Video Track. Drag the guide into the newly made video track. Pull the clip to the beginning of the track. Shotcut will helpfully provide you with a gentle snap into position. Create another new video track and drag the guide onto it. Create a black background by heading up to File, Open Other, and under Generator, select Color. Click Color and make it black. The easiest way to find pure black is on the Color Palettes tab for Mac users. Hit OK, then add it to our playlist with the plus icon again. Drag it below the guide in your timeline. If you want to make more space for any of your windows, you can grab these lines of dots and extend any panel. I'll make a bit more space for the timeline. I want to turn down the opacity of the guide so that I can see the text better when I eventually add it on top. Select the guide in the timeline and go to the Filters tab. Hit the plus symbol. Locate the Opacity filter. You can find it quickly by starting to type Opacity in the search field. Click the Opacity filter to add it to the guide. Pull the Opacity slider down to something like 30%. To add text, create a new video track. Go to File, Open Other, and under Generator, select Text. Write out what you want the text to say. I'm going to go with a classic fairy tale message of And they lived happily ever after. Leave the background transparent and hit OK. Click on the Playlist tab and add the text we just made by hitting the plus icon. Drag it into our newest video track. With the text clip still selected, go to the Filters tab. We can see it already has a text filter. In here you can amend your text if you want to. You can also change the size, colour, font and other parameters. I want mine to have a storybook feel so I'm going to use a nice gothic font called English Town. I've included the link in the description. It's free to use for personal and commercial purposes. I'll make it size 288. I'll also make the outline thickness zero. I'll make the text run across two lines by adding a carriage return before the word happily. By clicking and dragging on the circle at the centre of the text box in the preview window, move the text into the position you want. In an ideal world, I'd make the line spacing larger, i.e. I'd increase the gap between the two lines of text so that they both sat exactly in the middle of a tier. Unfortunately, there isn't a parameter to adjust line spacing. If you really wanted to do this, you could split the text into two clips, one with a text filter containing and they lived, and another containing happily ever after, and put one directly above the other on a separate video track. I won't do that here because it would mean two clips to edit, which will mean unnecessary repetition of steps. The text currently only covers four seconds in the timeline. I would like the text to last for something like 15 seconds. Drag on the end of the clip to extend it to the desired time, keeping an eye on the timecode beside your cursor as you go. Do the same for the guide and the black colour clip.
There are some filters we can apply to add a bit more interest to the text. Add another filter by hitting the plus icon with the text clip selected. The starred filters marked as favourites are listed in this favourites tab. Explore a few more filters in the video tab. Feel free to have a browse of these options yourself. I think I'll add some glow. I like it at about 45%. You can compare with and without the filter by checking it on and off in the list of filters. I'd also like the text to fade in at the beginning and out again at the end. I can do this by adding another filter and starting to type fade. Add both fade in video and fade out video. Both occur over one second by default. Tick on Adjust Opacity instead of Fade with Black for both fade filters. You can change the fade duration here. Or you can grab these handles on the clip in the timeline to either lengthen or shorten the time over which the fade takes place. Go to the beginning of your sequence by hitting this Skip to the Previous Point arrow. You can now play your sequence to review it. I'm fairly happy with that. It's simple, but it gets the job done. If I want to export this now, I'd need to remember to turn off the visibility of my guide layer. I do that by clicking this eye on the video track on which the guide lives. The eye goes from open to closed. To save out the sequence, go up to Export. There are many presets to choose from. I'll export using the default preset for now, which will save the video as an MP4 encoded with the H.264 codec. It's a fairly multi-purpose format. However, if you know which projection mapping software you will be using, Make sure to check the documentation which will list the formats and codecs the software performs best with. Save your videos in an appropriate format for your purpose. Hit Advance to see more options for your export. I'll be projecting with a single Full HD projector with an output of 1920 by 1080 Now 2048 by 2048 is actually larger than I need for my purposes. When I create assets for this layout of the cake, I tend to use 2048 by 2048 in case I later want to use two projectors and then I'd have enough pixels to work with. I can always resize all these assets down to something like 1080 by 1080 if necessary. I'm happy with all the other settings. Hit export file. You can see the job progress bar over here on the right. So what if you want to add text to video content you already have? I'll import one of the animations from my shop. Add a new video track. Move the text clip to the top video track. Drag the animation to the video track underneath and move it to the start of the sequence. Drag the ends of our old clips, the text, the guide and the black colour clip to the end point of the animation. I'll jump to the start of my sequence and press play to see what I've got. The playback is a bit choppy on my machine, but I think this will look okay. I'll export it using the same steps as before. Now it's time to set up our mapping and see how our new content works when it's projection mapped onto the cake using MapMap, which can be downloaded for free. I've put the link to where it can be downloaded in the description. I'm going to assume you already have some familiarity with projection mapping in MapMap for this portion of the video. Open up MapMap. The most important thing to remember at this stage is that you must set up your mapping with the same guide you used in Shotcut. This is very important. Your text will only appear the same in Shotcut and in MapMap if you use the same guide for both stages. 
Import your guide by hitting the piece of film. For Mac users, import the PNG image version of the guide. For Windows users, I've been informed that some aspects of the software are different for you. I won't explain why now, but you should not import the PNG image. Instead, import the version of the guide, which I've saved out for you as a short MP4 video. It is included in the resources folder I've linked to below. If you are mapping a cake with different dimensions to mine, and you have made your own guide, and you are using Windows, you will also need to create your own MP4 version of your guide. If you watched the first part of this video, you should have enough knowledge of the tools in Shotcut to do this. Now add your first surface by clicking the rectangle. Using the corner handles, move the mesh so it fits around the top left tier in the input editor. Do the same for all the tiers, giving the meshes sensible names as you go. When you have finished setting up all the input meshes, in the output editor, move the corner points of the meshes to the corners of the corresponding tiers of your cake. For each of these meshes, change the source from the guide to your text animation. This is where things are different for Windows users. You don't have a source option in the inspector. Instead, you should be in the Paints tab and change the video file location from the MP4 guide to the text animation. The reason I asked Windows users to import the MP4 video version of the guide is because if you change the file location from an image file to a video file, MapMap doesn't like it. But because your guide was a video, and you are switching to another video, everything should work okay. Now we can see the text is where we expect it to be on the cake. We can go back into Shotcut and create any message we like using this method, and combine them with any other videos, creating endless possibilities for personalization and customization of your projection mapped cake. What message are you planning on putting on the cake? Do you have any questions? Let us know in the comments down below. If this video helped you, please hit that like button. Hit subscribe to stay up to date with more cake mapping and projection mapping tutorials and videos.